My name is Rams and welcome back to Against the Storm, wherein we have a new update, and that is the Rainpunk update. The update features a brand new game mechanic called Rainpunk, as well as a long-awaited overhaul to the Black Rot system. You can now collect infused rainwater and utilize it in rain engines to produce, uh, oh sorry, to boost production rather, in your buildings. But beware, this new technology might cause a lot of trouble in your settlement, so your blight fighters had better be ready. Interesting. So Blight Rot is now not going to be generated by simple production. It's only going to be generated by boosted production. But then boosted production has to be really, really good to really justify the fact that, you know, like, Blight Rot's not going to be constantly occurring on these earlier... Wait, actually, did they change the prestige levels? Yeah, Blight Rot has a significant, uh, greatly significant impact. Blight Rot has a stronger impact. Yeah, no, they... They didn't change the prestige levels. So maybe we can just avoid having to deal with Blight Rot for a fair few years and then just invite it when I really want the boost for everyone available. Also, it looks like there is the pipes building material, which is used to install rain punk engines in production buildings as well as to build geyser pumps. Produced by the crude workstation. Interesting. Smelter in the tool shop as well. Okay, this is actually, like, really stacked in terms of the items that we get. Starting out with seven planks, seven bricks, seven fabric. No matter who I take out here, what is this starting benefit? Also, 28 skewers, 28 clothes with just the lizard at the top here, 42 meat, 42 eggs, 42 roots. It's, like, really, really good. The only thing is that I don't super want lizards in the Royal Woodlands as much. Down here, we have a bunch of beavers who, while having a much more constricted offering set here, uh, do still have the fabric, the bricks, and the planks. That's not going to help them house themselves as fast. Like, obviously, the lizards, if they spawn on the map with the, the bricks and fabric here, they would be able to immediately house four of their own lizards. Uh, whereas for the beavers, I'm probably going to have to focus on... Unless I get, like, an early plank production facility, I'm probably just going to have to house them in a big shelter. I like the I like the beavers here, especially. So the beavers here would give us the ability to really, really benefit from the extra wood production from the trees by their specializing uh, in wood cutting, giving them the ability to more often uh, double the returns from that. I mean, yeah, let's do it. Let's take the beavers out on this mission. We also have only one cost vegetables and meat at this point, each of those being 42 in their stack. Considering we have the beavers, and the beavers are not going to be cutting down much food from the trees, they're going to occasionally get eggs. Uh, I may also want to support our foods early on. Have a look at the general area as well. I mean, there's clay here, there's mushrooms and berries. I could take an herbalist's camp with me. Immediately have the ability to harvest berries and mushrooms. Having the ability to harvest berries and mushrooms is actually pretty important with the beavers. The beavers not only like wine, which can be made out of both berries and mushrooms, I believe, but they also really like... Uh, pickled goods, which I believe can also be made out of both berries and mushrooms. I'm taking the herbalist camp with me. Let us name the settlement. This is... Uh... Wait, hang on. What are, what are the... What are the other... I, I can... Yeah, current setup would be lost. That'll be fine. Who do I have here? Because I was halfway through another settlement when the Rainpunk update dropped. So they actually refunded uh, that run, effectively. They gave me food stockpiles as well as some artifacts. I'm not going to spend them until we go out on the mission uh, in order to cover for the potential of that half run that was lost. So I know what name I used for that, and I guess it's still free to use. I've been playing a lot of uh, Shadow of War recently. So this is Minas Sorathil, because it just sounds so perfect in that structure. Uh, annoyingly. Oh, no, never mind. 
all of the things are there. They're just slightly in different positions. All good, all good, all good. Let us embark on this Minnesota little mission. So that was uh, Prestige 10 is giving Blight Rot greater, significantly greater impact. We have the Forest Mysteries of Soil Reclamation. Resource nodes depleted during drizzle seasons spawn fertile soil. Interesting. Uh, Looming Darkness. We don't have any of the Forest Mysteries activate until we get to Hostility 3. So if we can keep ourselves consistently below Hostility 3, things are going to go well for us. Piercing Winds, fuel efficiency is 200% lower. Then we also have Faint Flame, resources you sacrifice burn 40% quicker. Uh, cloud Burst, so they'll take coats from the warehouse. If they can't, they'll lower their resolve. And Sacred Flame Rituals, pay three wood for every villager. If you don't, they'll leave. We're always going to have the wood for that, just because of the map and the fact that we have the beavers. So the significantly stronger impact of Blight Rot here is Cis Generation Rate is increased by 150%. And the half corrupts 100% faster than normal. All looks good to me. We've got some clay and some eggs in this opening. Read more about Rainpunk. Let's do that. Just so we're all on the same page. And by the same page here, I do definitely mean uh, so that I can learn what Rainpunk is. <laughs> ah. Rainpunk technology utilizes the unique properties of rain to power advanced machinery. You can harvest, sorry, harness this technology by installing rain engines in your production buildings and fueling them with infused rainwater. Rain engines can increase production speed, improve the chance of additional yields, and reduce the workload on workers. To install rain engines, select a production building and navigate to the Rainpunk tab. These engines require pipes for installation and are needed to be fueled with rainwater in order to operate. Once installed, you can adjust their power levels, monitor their water consumption, and see the amount of pollutions, light rot, that they produce. There are three different types of infused rainwater, drizzle water, which is green, clearance, which is red, and storm, which is blue. These can be collected from geysers, which I found in glades. Okay, so we're first finding the rainwater from the glades. We're not just getting it from the sky. Uh, each geyser contains only one type of water and a geyser pump must be built on top of the geyser in order to extract it. Different buildings require different types of water. Drizzle water is primarily used in food production, clearance for crafting an artisanery, uh, and storm for heavy industrial production. On difficulty levels higher than Pioneer, so that's where we are, using right, uh, rain engines will boost production uh, and result in the emission of the pollution known as Blight Rot. Each recipe has a Blight Rot footprint that indicates the amount of pollution it will cause. This value is multiplied by the level of the rain engines which are operating in that building. For more information, look at Blight Rot and Corruption. I think that's a fair enough overview for me to get started here. Also, my god, look at the position of this main warehouse. Oh, it could not be more friendly to a woodcutter right now. Let's get one of them on either side. And then wrap around that bad boy as well. And yeah, I will need additional workers just hanging out. What do we have for our first pickup? Explorer's Lodge. Has in fact Crown Chronicles, which is going to give us plus one global resolve for each rebuilt or salvaged ruin. Kind of a hard sell. Cellar? The ability to make wine and pickled goods. And jerky. Honestly, that is the ability to keep my, uh, keep my people, like, eating well for quite a long period of time. I don't get significantly better production than one-star pickled goods. I think I have maximum two-star pickled goods. This would take vegetables or mushrooms. There's the berries that it would take happily. Obviously, it's going to need pottery, barrels, or water skins, and that's the real letdown. The fact that I'm going to have to get that in order to actually make the pickled goods. I'd love to get that covered by a cornerstone, like every time you discover a glade, get enough barrels, things like that. We also have the provisioner for creation of flour, barrels, and packs of provisions. I'm going to ignore the trapper's camp here. Meat, insects, and eggs. There's not even insects on this map. There is meat, apparently. I don't really think there was going to be that much meat. There is. Uh, oh, I can't forbid food consumption on this map, right? Yeah, I can't forbid any food consumption. That's kind of annoying. So that's going to make it difficult for me to get people to prioritize actually not eating all of the eggs or the mushroom or, you know, vegetables that I'm going to turn into wine or pickled goods. Crap. 
Provisioner stands out a little bit as well as the ability to give us faster production of packs of provisions so that I can try and get a better trading relationship early on. The fact that none of these is immediately offering to me plank production though does tell me the answer to the question that I had in my mind when I opened that screen in the first place and that is do I now want to put down a big shelter? And I do. So this is going to shelter uh, six residents by itself. And then I'll look into trying to get up a second big shelter. So that will be with a crude workstation there. And you can make planks up to a limit of 12. Enough to make a beaver house, please. Alright. By the by, I know I didn't necessarily immediately mention it at the top, but, uh, yeah! Another un unwarranted or unwanted, uh, break there. My, uh, audio equipment all exploded, and I had to import some more from Germany. It, the, the, the whole story actually goes more along the lines of, uh, Every piece of my audio chain made me think that it was failing, so I replaced each in turn after doing enough testing to be sure that it was the microphone and then sure that it was the wire. Uh, and then when I got to the very end of that entire process, I found out that actually it was the piece that was going to take the longest to replace. Damn it. Ain't that the way it always goes. Vineyard Town. This settlement specializes in wine production. Gain plus one to be resolved for every 70 wine produced. What if I just made a ridiculous amount of wine? What if I did? Some fossils contain valuable surprises. Two amber for every 20 sea marrow produced. Two amber for every six pack of trade goods produced. Um, like, if I took Vineyard Town, I would then immediately go and take the cellar. The only problem is then I desperately need the market or the guild house to actually kind of make use of any of the wine that I'm constantly making. Otherwise, I have a chain that supports the ability to gradually give resolve to the beavers while everyone else starves and dies. I almost feel like I'm forced to re-roll here. None of these is something that I want early on. Okay, a lot of these are a lot better, definitely. Uh, each newly completed Glade event lowers hostility by 10. So having this before I've even ventured into the very first Glade, does give me the ability much more confidently to try and keep myself below three hostility to prevent the worst effects. I'm gonna take that. Um, I do want to go into a dangerous glade pretty early on, but I just won't really have resources for solving it. I guess the coal will help. None of these look like they're gonna solve it for us, though. I'm going to take the cellar for the future. Oh, Lumber Mill! I'm so pleased to see you, Lumber Mill. So that's our plank production online. Thank you. Carpenter. No, 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 no. We got the Lumber Mill. Market! Holy hell! Okay, so Market is extremely valuable in that it requires a lot of planks to make, so the Lumber Mill is suddenly making the Market a lot more reasonable of a thing to kind of come out early here. The Market itself allows us to actually consume wine, so we will be able to actually make the beavers happy with all of the wine we can make in the cellar. And because we don't have harpies, our carry rate for villagers is only six at the moment. This would boost that to 16 per villager. Significantly fewer trips back and forth that everyone has to make. There is also worth noting the brickyard here for bricks, pottery, and crystallized dew. Crystallized Dew would give me one of either Crystallized Dew or Copper Bars, so I would have a resource for producing kind of metallic things later on in the game. Uh, the bricks, obviously, brick production is nice to have. Pottery would also give me the ability to have some production online for the wine to be actually held in. I do really want basically all of it, unfortunately. Oh, and everything except the carpenter. I think it has to be market, though. 
We're gonna have like a really, really early settlement here. Okay, so this building, the big shelter, you can actually not be made because the lumber mill is going to give me Because the lumber mill is going to give me such easy access to planks that I will just be able to make everyone their own beaver houses. Getting a little ahead of myself here. Obviously, uh, you don't need to make planks anymore at all. Uh, honestly, the crude workstation doesn't really need to make anything at this point. Just needs to exist so that I can suddenly make other materials if I suddenly need other materials. Moving on up. There we go. Welcome to our first orders. Problem solver and exploration. Interesting. Exploration is cut through the forest to discover five glades. I will ultimately want to do that. I'm going to want to do that you know, relatively early as well because I have the ability to reduce my uh, negativity by opening, uh, or sorry, reduce the hostility from opening those glades by completing the events in them. But then we also just have complete any three glade events. So do I care hugely about workers assigned to glade events carry five more items? Not over much because I do have the market. So everyone's going to be able to carry 16 items at a time. So this is kind of minimal, trivial even. Three new villages, I think, ultimately is going to win out there. Oh. So the guild, keep beaver's resolve above 20 for 30 seconds. As soon as I have wine and the market online, that'll happen. Very easily. Clearing glades, though, is also going to happen while I'm finishing the other task. Five packs of building materials. Building materials are very, very easy for us to make at this point. The lumber mill makes planks at a three-star rate, and it makes building materials at a one-star rate. So, absolutely accessible for us. Ultimately, it then comes down to the rewards. I mean, three parts equal. 30 jerky beats 30 roots. Uh, four villages beats two beavers. Easy. Impetuous Explorer. Impetuous Explorer is complete any three glade events. It would reward me the weaver as well as plus three to pickled goods production. Oh God. And three parts. It would 17 minutes? You're giving me 17 minutes to complete three Glade events. That, I have to have the time to do this. 17 minutes! I was about to turn that down because I was like, nah, absolutely not. That's not going to occur. 17 minutes? That's multiple years. <laughs> I should have the time to do that. Uh, okay. So seller, I'm not going to need wine or pickled goods or jerky to really save myself in any situation against like an event. Not really an event kind of thing. That is one of the problems that I'm gonna be running into consistently here. I don't have solutions for events available in any of my items at the moment. That said, I do kind of need to see glades as well, pretty badly. I think the lumber mill is a priority, please. No? Okay. Thank you for getting around to it. Let's just reward that space with the beaver who will start making the planks for us. You know something I could do is just just open our way into that one. That'll get us a glade. If there's an event in there, oh boy. What a help that will be. Blight Rod, expected half corruption rate. Go to the Blight Posts. Yeah, 0% at the moment, so not a thing I really need to worry that much about or at all. Here comes our next season. We're in clearance. So I definitely break into the Dangerous Glade at the start of the next year, 100%, as soon as we get through the storm. So I got three months of this left, and then the storm is another... Sorry, three minutes of this left, so the storm's another two minutes. 
Hey, there is an event here, and it's the best one to get at this point in the time. So I now know that I have humans and harpies in the rest of the settlement. I also now know... Uh, mushrooms I'm getting from the trees, so they're the easiest to get rid of here. Uh, I also now know that I can get two additional people very early on, which is going to be very, very helpful. Gives a lot more production speed, gives a couple more people to work on a couple of different events in the area as well. So useful. Now I only need two glade events in the dangerous glade for me to actually get through this. There we go, they're welcome in a couple more seconds, and there they go, then woodcutters, well, I guess, let's get one of you in the lumber mill for the moment. Um, I'm gonna move this right up to the tree line so it's an immediate push into that space when I need to next season, or rather next year, season after next season. Um, thinking about housing, I can make a human house. I cannot make a Harvey house right now. However, I can make the fabric in order to make a Harvey house. So I'll get started on that. Making the Harvey house at the start of the season here seems like one of the things I should do first. Just. Prevent the harpies from hating me and immediately running away. Or the harpy, as the case may be. Okay. Um, I do need to drop down below one right now. If I want to keep the harpies happy. Do I want to keep the harpies happy? Yeah, I want to keep the harpies happy. <laughs> so I'll take... Two people off of wood cutting, and that gives us a lot more builders to work. Absolutely no problem with that one. It does look like we have burned some of the coal. I'm going to tell them not to do that. Because they absolutely should not need to. Deliver, deliver the fabric. There you go, deliver the fabric. And then I can immediately take you out of the building. And woodcutters, don't need to go back to that just yet. So planks have been made for a while. I should still... Yeah, okay. Now I have the ability to make a decent amount of beaver houses. Three. I mean, one more beaver house if I can. And then a human house would be nice too. Alongside all of this, I should also remember that it is time to put down our first park. I'm trying to start designing these to be slightly different to how I've designed them in the past. I'm just gonna put the park there. I just don't want to just end up with the same layout of settlement every single time. Okay, there goes the rest of the storm. I refill the camps. I'm gonna replace the ancient hearth with a harpy. Let's look at our cornerstone before we look at our newcomers. Copper extractor, every, sorry, gain one copper ore for every five wood produced. All crystallized dew production is reduced by one. So this would just make sure that we are drowning in copper ore the entire time. We get so much wood on this map. Old Fedora, I never really loved that. Uh, urban planning for every 10 completed trade routes. All houses have room for one more person, but construction is 25% slower. Also, you're allowed to use the legendary mist pierces. With such a rare gift at your disposal, the Queen's expectations are high. The contents of the glades will be revealed, but every discovered glade increases the Queen's impatience by 0.5. Mist Pierces is very powerful, but Copper Extractor is just infinite copper on this map? 
I think that might be cool. Let's also have a look at our newcomers. Yeah, I could get 18 reeds if I want to get a couple more harpies. But if I only get one more of each harpies and humans, they can slot into the houses that I already have. Love it. So we should get the plus three resolve to the entire area really soon. Working events. Okay, so while we're working on this, we will have negative eight to global resolve. That's honestly not that bad. Gain three incense for every 10 roots produced. Not an incredible perk, I don't think here. Oh, <gasps> clearance water geyser, there is one, neat. Um, yeah, not an incredible perk, I think, for us here, but eight parts and 12 simple tools, both very good. Yeah, absolutely investigate that. Now, I can't favor the harpies. Is a problem I'm gonna run into right now. So I can't favor the harpies, and they're... They're currently stressed. Favoring is blocked from the start here for us. How do I increase the... Well, I, the one, one way is obviously getting the park up. Actually just getting the production of that to begin. Uh, I don't want to take more people off of woodcutting, but I do need more people to build. So I don't really have a choice there. I'm gonna take three people off of woodcutting, which will actually solve the Harpies Resolve problem for the moment, as well as give me a couple more builders to just rush around and do the deeds. We've also got the Clothier here for four planks and four fabric. We can rebuild the Clothier for cloth, sorry, coat construction. And the coat construction favors Harpies working in that job as well. Uh, yeah, I absolutely wanna get this as soon as possible, as soon as I can put planks into that. That will also be our third event. That, that counts as an event. Certain, right? In this instance, that counts as an event. It's gonna be, it's gonna tie up my entire stomach if uh, that turns out not to be the case in some whoops kind of way. Um, no, we just need like one more plank right now. Is that actually the case? You know what? I'm gonna hold off on that beaver house, get some planks back, and send all of those beavers to go and get that Clovia. And then we'll focus back on the beaver house. Orders are back up. I'm gonna look at the first one, but not the second. Sacrificing. Sacrifice 30 oil, 30 wood, and 30 coal. I mean, it's not difficult to complete this unless, well, except that I need oil. Fuel burns longer, 20 copper bars, plus one to the resin. Ugh. Happy Harpies gives, honestly, a lot of fabric and a decent amount of pigments. That's probably enough. I'm not gonna look at the next one yet. I'm working this for another five minutes at this point, so that will complete before him, uh, Impetuous Explorer. Another one minutes and 23 seconds on this ruin. If this ruin doesn't count as a clade event for that, I'm gonna be really sad. I, sw I, I have this weird inconsistency about, like, the, oh, do ruins count as clade events or not? I don't think they count as dangerous clade events, but I do think they count as clade events. And I think that's where the 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 the, uh, the the misalignment of that information has occurred in my head to the point that every single time I see one, I'm like, oh, is this gonna work? Let's just set up some scaffolding while I can. I mean, we also do have, haven't even mentioned these yet, huge deposits of mushrooms as well as of clay. So as soon as I get the ability to make pottery, boom, I'm done. That's that's all of the wine that I will ever need. Yeah, okay, so one event was completed when we finished the Claudia. That is very, very good to see. Uh, the Harpies are now happy enough that if I added more stress to the situation, 
Yeah, they're not going to run away. Great. Gives me the ability to put more woodcutters back on the job. Still handy, still necessary. Uh, my food production is not going good. And by good or uh, going good, what I mean is going. It's not happening. No, I'm not. I'm not producing. There we go. I'm not producing food. That's how you say those words. This is going to be such a great position for this. Oh my god. So excited. Uh, we, in preparation for that, will need more bricks. So let's build a clay deposit. Also, if I can house two more... No, I can't house two more people here just yet. I can only house one more people here. But I should probably get ready to make a garden. No? Another season? Yeah, no, 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 no. I need to rush. Unless I got people from this event. Impetuous Explorer. No, Problem Solver does give me people. So yeah, no, maybe I do need to rush towards building a garden there. Come on, baby. We can have 12 simple tools as well, which is going to make me a lot more bold in terms of breaking into new areas. Also, let's have a look at the influences on our hostility. We've got the the negative 20 from the... Da, 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 there we go, forest mitigation, which is really, really helpful. Let's also make sure that... Oh no, it's packs of trade goods that I can make here. Ah, I thought I was going to be able to instruct the building materials, but that's okay. The building materials will still be available to me. Uh, building materials, building materials. That is the makeshift post. In fact, I'll just use the copper ore for that, absolutely. Much easier. So glad Impetuous Explorer was not actually ridiculously difficult to complete. In fact, could scarcely have been easier. Boom. All right, Problem Solver, the first version, uh, is 10 planks, six of the simple tools, as well as three villages and a reputation point. And then Impetuous Explorer is plus three to all pickled goods production. This, okay, this, this feels bad. No, wait, it doesn't feel bad. Holy hell. It's the Weaver is what we get from the Impetuous Explorer. I thought for a second there that what we were gonna get was gonna be the Clothier. But now I have the Weaver and the Clothier. That is the ability to make fabric at the best rate possible and then coats at the best rate possible and Humans and beavers love wearing those, and the harpies love making those. This is going really well. Oh, I'm over the moon. Uh, yeah. Oh, the construction needs to occur still. Okay, so the big mission of this next year should be getting food online. Absolutely should be. Speaking of getting food online, any of these gonna help us out with that one? Oh boy, are they! Stamping mill! Pottery production! With the best pottery production rate in the entire game, it uses clay and wood. We're gonna make uh, pickled goods constantly. That's immediately gonna start happening. We're gonna make uh, wine constantly. That's gonna start happening as well. Get that stamping mill. And now you offer me the scribe. The scribe giving me the ability to make scrolls, which is at the best rate for beavers and harpies, and then ale at the second best rate possible for humans and beavers. Yes, I will accept the scribe. Holy hell, holy hell. The game is just giving me what I need and it's, I don't know. It, 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 uh, should I be flattered? or offended that the game thinks I need as much help as it seems willing 
as much as it seems it compelled to provide. Yeah, I'm gonna accept more people. Even right before the start of a storm. Harvey's resolve is low, yeah, that makes sense. Um, can I... How's more of the harpies? Not at the moment. New. Hmm. I do want to make a weaver as well. No reason not to make it there. Doesn't actually need to be next to the other one. Were the harpies starving or something? Oh no, they're getting positive uh, resolve now from the jerky. Got it. That's what's going on. Ooh, we also now have the hub level of encampment because we've housed enough people. So I can get a garden constructed there, as well as some pipes to set us up for the next level of society. I'm also going to make the harpies a little happier by giving them a job that they like. Do anything else to assist the harpies at this point without just taking a bunch of people off of woodcutting or sacrificing goods. Sacrifice some goods. Two stacks of woodcutting is already enough. Or two stacks. It's a lot of wood to be losing consistently here, but I think it'll be okay. There we have our hub up now. Current level is neighborhood. Uh, I do want to get my market down as soon as possible. That is going to require more fabric, but that's okay. We have the best fabric production in the entire game at this point. Uh, placing the market's going to be a little... Uh, I was about to say placing the market's going to be a little bit of a trial, but like that's an absolutely fine position for it. And in fact, delivered its resources. Okay, let's take the sacrifice of wood off immediately and check our cornerstone. Blood price. Lost in the woods. Blood price. Gain a amber every time a villager leaves or dies. Lost in the woods. Gain a villager every time you discover a new glade. Uh... Friendly Relations boosts Global Resolve by one for every three levels of standing with other trade routes. And Peasant Supplies receive three packs of provisions for every new villager. I'm going to take Peasant Supplies just so that I can actually get some trading going on now. There we go. Traders post in good position as well. And new villagers. I don't super care much about getting pipes up at the moment. Do I care about getting pipes up at the Okay, if I had some pipes. Um I need more than 21 at the moment though. Geyser pump. Requires nine planks and six pump. Then used to extract and infuse rainwater through underground pipes to production buildings where it is used to increase productivity must be placed on active geyser. Okay, so I'm not constructing then after a bunch of different pipes to an area. How much does it cost to... Okay, connect pipes to the area would be five for the Claudia and then here five. Okay, so it's five as well. Uh, the water type is clearance. This is clearance. Holy hell. I have the ability to actually immediately start using this water geyser. Oh, boy. In crafting orientated buildings. Yeah, and the lumber mill doesn't count. <laughs> Familiar little image there. Um, make sure post wood. I mean, yeah, I feel like I could make the, the weaver and the clothier both have clearance water and be pretty happy about that, right? It will cause blight rot to gradually spread throughout the city. The more infused rainwater is used, the quicker the spread of the blight rot. I have to use the new mechanic. We're in a run with the new mechanic. I'm putting this down. Get that geyser. Okay, 
Okay, so connecting pipes to the Claudia is showing. Uh, rain engine, there are two engines here. I can increase production speed by 40% for the lowest. Increase the chance for extra yields by 20% or increase production speed by another 40%. Turning it to the final knob on engine one. On the next, work is much easier with the rain engines on. Uh, workers gain plus five to resolve or another plus five to resolve. So I can increase their resolve while, while the rain engines are running. Got it. So the more water that I use, the higher the footprint of the produced goods. And global reserves infused tank water build one additional geyser pumps or upgrade existing ones to increase tank capacity. Dense. There's a lot of dense stuff in the system that we're going to be diving into. Um, I... I don't feel like I need the extra pipes immediately, sir. But I also don't feel like I immediately need the coal or the grain or the parts. Especially such a low limit of them. Um, okay, pipes here. I mean, I don't actually have water to send over just yet, but I will soon. Oh, packs of building uh, materials are complete here as well. They were also complete ages ago, so I should have ended that ages ago. Oops, oops, oops. There goes the mark. Nothing yet? Really? I would have assumed it would already have a decent amount of fabric in. Geyser pump. Oh, so the geyser pumps actually manually need to be worked. There we go. We'll get a couple people in the geyser pump. And now that we have a flow of water, surely the weaver will have the ability to start utilizing it. Hey, Sir Hilda, general trader, welcome. You have with you a bunch of basic resources. I don't really want a bunch of basic resources. However, I will say the reinforced needles for the plus two to fabric production does look appealing. Uh... Can I generate 27 golds worth of value in trades? No. No, 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 no. I'm not doing that. That is, that is, that is bait trap. That is a bait and trap. However, I will start to establish relationships with nearby towns by sending them anything they want. Polidaria and Sydney are both asking for simple tools. Willowheim is asking for... Insects. Especially because I can't sell that much food, you may just have one stack of insects. Uh, the fabric production from Baladaria would also be really nice to make a deal with there. Okay. If this clay deposit actually gets exhausted during a drizzle as well, I will end up with four uh, pieces of fertile soil there, so I could just put a, uh, one of the, one of the, one of the ones with no, uh, farmable land after it, one of the ones that's just itself standing alone, the two by two production facilities, your clay pits and so on. Okay, so the weaver has run out of materials to weave, unfortunately. Even after all of that, we still don't have enough fabric. Oof. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not like I can buy fabric or even the materials for fabric from Hilda here. So where else can I get fabric right now? I mean, cutting down trees is the main source of it for me. That is basically the only source of it for me, though. Oof. That's not good. We only need two more fabric for that market to be fine. Come on, come on, pop it out. We're ready for it. After the market, I will still need 
we just move the makeshift host and the crude workstation because they're going to be less relevant now. So I can put a cellar directly facing instead. And I got the stamping mill for the pottery production. So let's put the stamping mill there also. There's also copper bar production in here if I desperately need it. Also, both of these are of the clearance type, which I do have still some access to. Good to see the market is actually finally getting created. We are low. <laughs> yeah. This is a problem that I realized was coming for a while, and I kept saying, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah we'll solve that. Now it's now, and we haven't, so things are going bad. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, let's just extend those out a little. I will need to free up some harpies in order to work those as well, but that's okay. Don't think that's gonna be too much of an issue for us to do. Herbalist camp number one, herbalist camp number two. Uh, is that going to be enough to feed the entire facility? One hopes. Yeah, I don't really want to increase the production speed if the weaver is about to run out. Put one of you in the market, increasing everyone's... Uh, carry ability at the moment. And then these herbalist camps need as many harpies as I can put in them. I'm going to give us 20% uh, slower fuel consumption by putting a beaver into the central hearth as well. And then I still do need bricks, I believe. Yeah, I'm going to need a lot of bricks. Please, please exhaust this. This season. Otherwise, I should probably take you all off the job. No! Oh, they exhausted at exactly the worst time! No! Right. This order does have a timed order, and it is for the production of mushrooms in the atmosphere. I mean, do I really want it, though? Yeah, I do. Uh, the, the, the goal now is make as many mushrooms as quickly as I can. Let's tell you only to collect mushrooms, and you only to collect mushrooms. And that should already be 55 of them, I feel. 73 minutes, yeah, yeah, with that, yeah, 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 in that position, that should work. Let's also start worrying about the next half does need to go down as soon as possible. That's the position. And then I'm looking for a warehouse very nearby as well. Maybe that's closer than it needs to be. Maybe it could even be over here. I like the position down there even. Ooh, or what about? The, uh, already taken. It's just that's a really good position for a, a stonecutter's camp as well. Fine. Let's do that. I think that's probably got the most dignity. Maybe... Yeah, because the Noblest Camp is eventually going to be sitting right there. So maybe it cuts in like that, looks a little odd. Obviously we're not really going to be able to construct almost all of this except for just like the, the roads at the moment, but... Very useful for me to be able to scaffold that. Give me a little idea of... Exactly how much work there is still left to be done over there. Alright. 
you'll have got enough rainwater at this point. We don't need any more. And we're not even using the rainwater yet. We will be using it at some point. I have, I've committed myself in that direction. Soon as I figure out how. Okay, this cellar is not being produced for lack of fabric. Makes sense. Uh, I'm just gonna get humans to build this for the moment. Then let's get some of our beavers comfortably up in here starting to make pottery. Okay. I'm also uh, basically entirely out of clay again, so I'm just going to deliver this final load of them. And then hold the rest of the copper for making pottery with at this point. So, stamping mill, starting to make a decent amount of pottery. The cellar does not have the fabric just yet in order to start making the wine and pickled goods that they're going to want to start making, although the wine and the pickled goods will each require them having a resource that they currently don't really have the ability to get comfortably. Hmm. Hmm. I think maybe I need uh, some more herbalists camps right now. And it doesn't really matter if they're stocked with people, as long as they are stocked. I'm very surprised that this hearth is even coming up at this point. Thrilled about it, mind. Surprised about it, though. Um, I have a decent amount of wood and I shouldn't need any more over the course of this season just yet. So realistically, I can pretty much just take as many people off of woodcutting as is required in order to drop my rate there. Man, the harpies are running away instantly. It is the hunger that's mostly doing it, I guess. Doesn't feel like it's the hunger that's doing it, though. Okay, the two of you held up in that lumber mill. That makes sense. Uh, let's get two humans in the cellar. It's not important right now to make wine, though. I mean, jerky would be useful. I need to get more food production up than I can afford to eat so that I can actually utilize that excess elsewhere. Clothing's not really going to help me in this season, I don't think, that much. I mean, you know, a sacrifice is probably the path, right? get us down to one, then only the harpies are stressing out at this point, and then I just have to worry about making sure that the harpies eat. I could also just build a second harpy house, which is realistically what we need to do right now as well. Let's get this endless camp filled up. There's one down here as well. And extra beavers can be our woodcutters for the moment. Yeah, the harpy is literally about to run away gonna add more to my sacrificial stacks there in order to keep the harpies happy but uh, now we are really burning through our wood and we're also not getting any right now thankfully the mushrooms in the herbalist camp mission is now complete giving us plus one to mushroom production very important from now on as well uh, as well as 20 jerky. Thankfully, we will be able to feed people. We also get the supplier, I believe that is. Uh, one second. I guess completing that put me over another bracket. Uh, we get the supplier, which is for flower, plank, and water skin production. Water skin production is not going to be very common on this map. Flower production, not super common either. Honestly, I'm pretty unlikely to make the supplier, but I do have it. 
That's a nice feeling, at least. I should also check on some of my trade routes. Wow, it's been a really long time since I've done that. Definitely not giving you jerky. Sorry about that, bud. That's mine. Sydney, I'll just increase my relationship with you, with the coal. I can building materials to Willowheim as well. And that'll have to do. Oh my god. Workshop, leather worker, bakery, and the tool shop are all available now. Tool shop gives me the best production of simple tools available on the entire map. Uh, I do have copper bar production myself as well. It also gives me pipe production. Which could be relevant. Bakery, leather worker, and workshop. Honestly, tool shop is the only one here that makes sense in any way. Yeah, I can sa stop sacrificing everything now. The harpies won't have time to get mad at me. Cornerstone, hunter-gatherers. Uh, all camp productions increased by 100%, but all buildings that use fertile soil have their yields decreased by 50%. <sighs> Wait. Oh, back to nature is the opposite, almost. An old forbidden ritual. Increase yields by 100% in all buildings that use fertile soil, and you will lose all stored food. I don't have any stored food, so that would work, but I don't have any buildings that use fertile soil, so that's why I'm going with hunter-gatherer. Which I am very excited about. Um, <laughs> Let's get people back in woodcutting. Heck, I think I might even want a third woodcutter's camp at this point. Just seems like a good idea to me. Let's also have a look at some new villagers. Five! Five new harpies! I need new harpies basically for every job at the moment, so yes! I will take five new harpies, thank you! Uh, Sydney, you may have three building materials for those six, thank you much, Lee. Baladaria, you can have the only two copper bars that I have if you just promise to love me. Willowheim, I can buy a new trade slot if I want to try and increase this relationship still. I think it's pressing that I do that. Okay. Our hub requires four more people housed near it and decorations in order to advance. However, I do think I probably want to spread out my population. So I'm thinking more of like, how can I most densely pack folk around here? And they don't have much a uh, copper sorry they don't have much clay accessible so they don't really have the ability to make the bricks that well we definitely have to have the ability to start making some wine say up to 25 wine at a time and we have a lot of beavers 40 wine at a time and then make pickled goods Use berries or mushrooms to make the wine. And then use berries or mushrooms to make the pickled goods. Obviously using pottery the entire time. So he is hoping that we can start snaking out those resources from under everyone else. I mean, we do have the stonecutters down here actually using the stonecutters camp, so... It's not like I'm avoiding getting all of the clay that I'm going to ultimately end up requiring. It's just very slow. Now, large abandoned cash down here, I don't actually have the simple tools in order to open you yet. You would give plus two to stone production? You were supposed to help me, not betray me! Out. 
Ongoing fabric production is still bad, that makes sense. This woodcutter's camp needs to move to get some stuff to actually cut at this point. That also bears out reasonably. Try and expand around our other half. You know what? Actually, expand above the half that we currently have. We're not really expanding upwards at all, and I would like to. So that the Ancient just arrived, let's make sure there's no other trades that I care about right now. There are not. 16 seconds will give me six more Amber, just in case that's super relevant here. Any <laughs> builder can carry 10 additional items. Not relevant. Oh, uh, that clay though. 15 for the full stack. I want it. I do want that clay. I'm not currently utilizing my copper, but people will start trading me for my copper later on. I could get rid of one wildfire essence without feeling it too badly right now. And then patch over the gap with some copper. Right back at you, bud. Um... These go into the crude workstation, start making those bricks. We are going to need those. For housing everyone especially. Campus camp has no deposits nearby. I see. Thankfully, I prepared earlier a location for these herbalist camps to move to. Uh, although, ones that can still collect berries are happy being there. Sulfur, you don't have anything else that appeals. Just wanted to make sure. If they had any ability to help me make uh, harpy houses, that would have been particularly valuable to me. Alas. They do not I've got so many mushrooms at this point! Oh, so that is because we are getting plus one to the mushroom production and then also plus 100% to the yields in the area. So when we pick up a mushroom, we pick up four mushrooms at the same time. And if a harpy does that and then doubles the result, they pick up eight mushrooms at a time. So we are now kind of breaking out of food being a concern for our society at any point in time. And with the use of the cellar, we are using that lack of food as a problem uh, to create a lack of resolve as a problem, especially for the beavers, what with the wine and pickled goods being things they particularly enjoy. We could not be more well set up at the midpoint here of year four. I think the fact that we are now completely on the turn to be able to create as much food as we need to, and we already have paths towards very, very consistent resolve generation, Noting again that I do have leisure production as well as scroll production online. I think we are going to leave it here. So for the moment, my name is Ben Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Against the Storm. Welcome back. It's good to see you all. Hopefully you all have been enjoying yourselves. There's a playlist up in the top left. YouTube recommendation down below. And hopefully we'll see you many more times over the course of this year.